Hi, in today's video, I want to talk about three very common mistakes that can either slow down a robotics project or frustrate a developer to the point where they give up and stop working on the project altogether. I also have some very exciting news and something to give away. I'm very excited to announce that Practical Robotics in C++ is now available in print and ebook format. You can find that on Amazon's website, Barnes & Noble's website here in the United States, as well as the publisher's website that I'll link to in the description. If I'm not able to link to something in your country, just go to the Amazon site that you usually use and enter Practical Robotics by Lloyd Brombach. We're currently running as the number one new release in Kindle format, so you'll certainly find it if you search for it. My goal for the readers is for them to come away with all the foundational knowledge they need in electronics, hardware, robot operating system, and robot control strategy and theory that they're able to build a complete autonomous robot. The rules to the giveaway are simple. Be a subscriber to this channel, watch this video, like the video, and most importantly, leave a comment below. Your comment should be a question on a robotics topic that you'd like to know more about. This will help me produce content that's more relevant and exciting to you. Without further delay, let's talk about three common mistakes that slow down or stop robotics projects. The first common mistake that slows down or stops a robotics project in its tracks is trying to build too large a robot for your first robot. Believe me, I understand that large robots are a ton of fun, super impressive to show off, and just super awesome in general. I get it. I really do. But you have to understand, the time that you have available to work on that machine is going to go down when the robot's larger. I currently have this beautiful machine sitting in my garage, and it's six degrees outside. I don't want to go out there. <laughs> I can't drive it around inside. I don't want to be outside. Even on nice days, if it starts raining or it gets dark, my time to develop on this machine is limited. That said, my small robots, I've been able to take camping, take the hotel rooms, and they've just been accessible to me a great much percentage of the time than a large robot would. Make no mistake, all the algorithms, programs that you write and use for your small robots work on your outside robots, your large robots as well. So I can't recommend enough that if you're just starting out, you're building your first robot, and you haven't programmed one yet, you still need to learn ROS, you still need to learn navigation, path planning, autonomous motion, all these things we cover in Practical Robotics in C++. I highly recommend that you build a small robot, maybe the size of a robot vacuum or smaller. That robot's going to be available to you 24-7, rain or shine. If your robot's small enough, you can leave it online in the basement, your office or workshop, and you can remotely connect into it from anywhere in the world. I've been doing robotics for a while and crashes are still going to happen on my robots and my build. So I don't think it's wise for a new roboticist to build a large robot and leave it online until everything is tweaked and perfected. The second big mistake that I see all too often that's gonna slow down or possibly cause your robotics project to screech to a halt is worrying about specific behaviors and advanced things before you have perfected the robot chassis, the robot platform. What I mean by that is all too often when somebody's working on a build and we're trying to get the motors working and they start talking and worrying about, well, how are we gonna integrate the camera? And how are we going to integrate uh, the laser? And we have to write the mapping algorithm. And to that I have to say, no, you don't. You absolutely don't want to just yet. The reason for this is if you build your robot, you attach your motors, you have a program to run the motors, a new program to control path planning and autonomous motion control, and you try to run all of those at once, you're going to end up with a big mess. And when it doesn't work, and it really probably isn't going to work right away, you're going to have no idea where to start debugging and troubleshooting. Slow down. The first thing you need is two to four or six wheels, whatever your robot's going to be. You need wheels, motors that are repeatedly and reliably controllable. And once you have these that are controllable by software, meaning that you can manually enter that it should be traveling at one meter per second, half a meter per second, and it's going to follow those commands and turn at the pace you ask it to turn, until you have that, you really don't have any business working on these more advanced things, these autonomous behaviors. But once you have that, you now have the key to the universe. 
you can write program after program after program and just try them all and immediately know if something doesn't work that it's a problem with your program and not with a drive controller and not with a physical problem with the motor or motor driver not working properly. So get these basics handled before you bother worrying about computer vision and LiDAR and GPS. You need a basic machine that works reliably before you worry about making a, an autonomous driver for it. The third mistake that's going to slow down or stop your robotics projects in its tracks is trying to do too many things in one program. In the software world, we call this lack of encapsulation. What I very often see in new roboticists, and I've been guilty myself in the past, is trying to do too many things in one program. And by that I mean, you've managed to put power to the wheels through a program and control the velocity and steering of the robot. And now you immediately want to take some data from your sensors, for instance, uh, your ultrasonic sensors or your LiDAR and tell the robot to go forward. And if it sees uh, an obstacle with those sensors, those sensors will output something in the same program that tells the robot to slow down or turn or stop just to avoid collision. When you try to tie behavior like obstacle avoidance or line following into the same program as your robot motion control, you're really limiting your robot to those behaviors. You'll never be able to expand your robot to do more autonomous things like go build a map, go fetch a ball. Uh, anything else you can think of you might want your robot to do, it's going to be nearly impossible to incorporate that into the same program. So we segment, we separate parts of our program. Our robot motion control uh, parts shouldn't know anything about what obstacles exist. All they should know is that they accept a command to go and move in a certain direction, turn right, turn left, go how fast. Your robot's obstacle detection software shouldn't even know that a motion control software exists. Autonomous robots can get really complicated, and we need to make sure our software is following something called the single responsibility principle. And that means every software package, every little program that we write, is going to do exactly one thing. It's going to control the wheel velocity, or it's going to detect the distance. It's not even detecting uh, necessarily an obstacle. Something else is going to interpret that data and that data will be plotted on a map as an obstacle or free space. Something else is going to interpret that map data. So we don't do all these things in one program for a very good reason, because by keeping it modular, we can easily make changes, add new behaviors, uh, inject data from multiple sources instead of just one. And all of these options are available to us if we're using proper encapsulation. So that's three very common mistakes that I see all the time that slow down or stop robotics projects before they're ever finished. Practical Robotics in C++ can help you avoid all of these common mistakes. It can help you structure your code with proper modularity and encapsulation and keep you on a guided track so you can complete your robot. You can win a copy right here. All you have to do is like this video and leave a comment with either a robotics related question or a robotics related tip that you've learned along the way that has helped you. In about 10 days, I'll use an online random comment picker to pick one lucky subscriber who's left a comment below and to receive a print copy of Practical Robotics in C++. I'm Lloyd Brombach, author of Practical Robotics in C++. Thanks so much for watching, and we will see you next time.